Hello everyone. In this video, I will explain GPSR greedy parameter stateless routing. So before discussing GPSR, let's see what are the problems with the conventional routing protocols. So the first one uh, we are taking distance vector routing protocols. So in these routing protocols, every node maintains a table, and in this table they store the distance for every other node in the network and every node share this table with its neighbors so uh, so there will be a frequent exchange of routing tables if there is any link broken that update updated information has to be circulated again in the network and another one is link state routing protocol so in this routing protocol in uh, every node actually has entire topological structure so uh, initially if you can see this node will be having idea that b and c are connected to me same b also will be having this idea that b having only one neighbor so uh, these all nodes will share this information with their neighbors and every node will complete its topology for the network and once this topology is completed whenever these nodes want to send any data to another node in the network they will run a shortest path algorithm on their topology and they will find shortest path so uh, in this protocol also there will be exchange of the information now the thing is that if the rate of changes in top topology are higher it means more updated information has to be circulated and if the number of nodes in the network are more so the more and more information has to be sent in the network so uh, gpsr actually point out these two issues so uh, here we are starting our gpsr routing protocol so gpsr actually uses two forwarding first one greedy forwarding another one is perimeter forwarding so in gpsr every node share its location with its neighbors so let's say s is a node this node is having two neighbors so s will send a packet and that packet will be having its ip address as a part of its identity and the location of this node s so this packet will be sent to its neighbors so when a node receive such kind of packet they will put this entry in their table so every node maintains a table as well so let's say this node is having this table so when this node receives this packet from s it will put that s location is this one in terms of x and y coordinates now let's see what is greedy forwarding so let's say we are having a network this node s wants to send a data to node d so what this s will do s will check its own table and it will find out its neighbor's location and then it will see which neighbor is more closer to d than s so s will find out that neighbor w is more closer to d as node s itself so what this node s will do it will forward the packet to node w now node w will check its table and it will fetch location of all of its neighbors and then it will calculate the distance between those neighbors and the destination and uh, it will see which neighbor is more closer to d than node w itself so node y is more closer to d so w will forward packet to node y y also will repeat the same process y will see its neighbors and whichever neighbor is more closer to d it will forward packet to that neighbor and this forwarding will work like this one so this is our greedy forwarding now the question is that why we need parameter forwarding so there are cases where this forwarding will fail let's see this scenario so uh, in this case node s wants to send a data to d 
so s will check its neighbors and s will not find any neighbor which is having less distance than s so uh, if you can see all the neighbors of s are having more distance they are not closer so at this point of time greedy forwarding will fail so here we need some other approach uh, which can forward packet in case of this failure and why this failure actually occur so this failure occur because uh, in this area there is no neighbor in this area there is no neighbor and uh, we can denote this area like this one so this area also known as void this area is actually referred as void so when a node is not having any neighbors in this particular area at that point of time this forwarding will fail so uh, we are taking the same example here so in this case uh, we are showing these link it means this node in the range of s p and l are connected it means node l in the range of p so these connections are available and node s has to send a data to d so we are having here two options either s can forward its packet to node p or s can forward its packet to node q so here comes the parameter forwarding with the help of right hand rule so right hand rule is actually used to traverse the graph and this rule says that uh, if a packet arrives at x from y so the next as traverse is the next one sequentially counterclockwise about x from as x y let's see this one with an example so right hand rule says that if a packet arrives at a node so we are saying uh, we are assuming that a packet is arriving at node u from x so from this age packet is coming so from this age just go in counterclockwise so let me show it so from here if i will go in this side so it's not working so uh, in counterclockwise if we go so this is the next edge so the packet will be forwarded to this edge now from here also you need to see the counterclockwise so we started we came at this edge so now packet will be forwarded here again uh, we will go in counterclockwise next this one so our packet has uh, traversed this parameter successfully so this is the right hand rule if a packet is coming to a node so the next edge which will be traversed in the direction of anti clockwise now uh, there is a problem with right hand rule the problem is that if we are having cross edge in our network in that case this rule will not work properly uh, for example if this is the case so this packet arrives on node u from x so if we see the counterclockwise so the next edge will be this one and packet will be forwarded to z and from here if you will see counterclockwise this is the edge we will find packet will be forwarded to node w and then u and then x so uh, in this case our right hand rule will fail so in order to avoid these situations one heuristic is used that heuristic is known as no class heuristic sorry no cross heuristic so this heuristic says that in your network if two edges are crossing so just remove the second one so this technique actually blindly remove an edge which is crossing with another edge. 
so this uh, heuristic actually works in maximum time what but sometimes what this technique will do this technique will partition the network it may be possible that the as this heuristic is going to remove removal of that edge will leave this network into two different partition and if that happens in that case algorithm won't be able to find a route to destination so here comes the uh, concept of planner graph so that concept i will explain in the next video thank you very much for watching